Welcome to the Information Security Forum podcast. I am Tavia Gilbert. Today I'm speaking with Steve Durbin, Managing Director of the ISF, and we're talking about the topic of communicating with the Board of Directors and other stakeholders about cybersecurity. This podcast, CISO on the Board, Aligning Cyber with Your Organization's Business Strategy is the Conversation, This is relevant, particularly because Yahoo went public recently in admitting that it was hit with the biggest data breach of all time. Uh, And it's an astonishing number, an estimated 500 million customer accounts compromised by hackers. So this attack is not only having significant rippling effects on large businesses and small businesses, but families. And this is affecting consumer trust and data protection standards and information security practices. Uh, The legal battle is now also just beginning with two key cases being heard in California, and Yahoo is starting to work their way through this lawsuit for data protection negligence. So it's pretty important stuff we're talking about. Given the climate surrounding this major cyber incident, what stance should a chief information security officer, we know them as a CISO, What stance should they take with the board of directors when they need to explain what a breach of this magnitude could mean to that business? Yes, good question, Xavier. I mean, the the whole issue of Yahoo is is interesting in that, as you've rightly pointed out, it is such a large-scale breach. I think one of the things that we've seen probably over the last two to three years, you know, with Sony, with Target, with Ashley Madison, and then the list just goes on and on and on. But what we've seen is that that has served to raise the level of awareness in the boardroom of the impact that these sorts of things can have, not just on information security, but on the business in in general. And so when I talk to business leaders, irrespective actually of the size of organization that they happen to be in, their primary concern tends to be around reputation. How do I protect my business reputation? Because whilst a breach will automatically have an impact on the day-to-day working of security. It also has an impact on share price. That will recover over a period of time. But what takes much longer to recover is customer footfall, trust, brand reputation. And all of those things, of course, are so very, very hard to gain back. And that really is is what is of concern in, in, in the boardroom. And so from a from a CISO standpoint, what they should should they be doing on the on the back of these sorts of things? I think it's about taking advantage, if I could put it that way. It's about talking about how they need to be focusing within their own businesses on preparing for the day when something similar, hopefully not of the same magnitude, but something similar happens to them. So how would they respond? How would they have identified critical assets within the business so that they were adequately protected? And again, when we talk about adequately here, we're talking about in line with the risk appetite and the business profile of the organization. So it isn't about trying to throw this massive security net over everything that you've got. That, that's that's never going to work effectively. It's much more about how do I protect my key assets? And they will vary depending on the organization, depending on the regions that you happen to be working in and, and the sort of information that you're gathering, frankly. So for me, this, this kind of thing is a jumping off point for the CISO. It's it's really the starting position for him to have the conversation with the board about how they can sensibly protect their mission critical assets. How can a chief information security officer, a CISO, exhibit C-suite leadership and accountability when it comes to improving stakeholder confidence about cyber risk? Yeah, the, the, this one is is a real thorny issue for from a lot of organizations. I, I think because. Very many CISOs, as as I've said, don't have that immediate access into the board. Very often, they're still having to go through a third party. They may have to go through the chief risk officer, for instance. Uh, Some of them are going through the chief financial officer uh, or chief operating officer. It's a a hands-off relationship that they have with the board. So I think in those sorts of instances, what they have to do is to relate everything that they're doing from a cyber and security standpoint to the business strategy. That immediately forms a link. And and very often it's about trying to identify what I always call triggers for engagement. It's about, as a business, we might be rolling out some new product lines around the world, for instance. Okay, so what's the role of security in that? Well, it's about how do we protect intellectual property? Because we might be using a number of different manufacturing plants. Do we want the same security posture and profile, for instance, in in the United States versus in the Far East? Probably not. 
how many third parties are we involving in all of this? So again, what security posture should we be putting in place around our third party providers? Are we communicating that with them? So these are all ways in which you're actually contributing to the business discussion. You're not the no guys that are stopping things happening. What you're doing is saying, look, if this is really what we're trying to do as a business, then these are the issues that we need to be thinking about. And actually, you know what? I can help do that. So I can build in some of this security right at the right at the outset. And that's really where we need to be getting to. There are some organizations uh, that, that I'm very aware of that don't actually make a move anymore without at least being able to say, yes, we've, we've actually run this by the security people. We understand the impact of this. There are very many others that, that aren't at that stage of maturity or, or, or development. And so I think that um, from a CISO standpoint, you know, you, you have to be talking much more about and having a much better understanding of the business, where the business is going, so that you can then overlay the benefits of security onto those business issues that everybody understands at the top of the company. That's how you get credibility. That's how you get the resource and the funding. And that's how you make a difference. Interesting. And all of those things will lead back to regaining trust quickly in, in the event of some horrible, unforeseen attack, but anticipated. Absolutely. You've talked about how the board needs to work directly with the information security function in any organization. Why is that board and information security, why is that collaboration important? It's important, I think, because traditionally it hasn't happened. So if we, if we look back, you know, information security, not that many years ago, actually, tended to focus on the technical components, you know, the firewalls, trying to protect the perimeter. A lot of information security still lives within the IT department, for instance, or, the, or the, under the chief technology officer. But today, cyber is, is really all about how we go about transacting business. I'm not aware of any businesses anywhere that aren't involved in some way, shape or form in cyber. It doesn't matter whether you deliver milk uh, or whether you happen to be a very large bank. Everything is interdependent. And what we haven't seen is this joining up from the boardroom down to information security of how to communicate. We speak different languages in those two different segments. And that is a, is a very real issue and, and, and challenge. So from a security standpoint, we need to be able to convey the messages to the business in a language that the business understands. And from the business standpoint, we need to be making sure that our security posture and our risk appetite is completely aligned with our business strategy. And again, if you happen to be a, you know, a large multinational, that will vary depending on the countries and geographies that you're active in. If you happen to be a small organization, it could vary depending on which supply chains you happen to be in. So who do you provide service to? What is their security posture? How do you perhaps reflect that in your own business so that you can comply with what's with what's required. So as we begin to talk about these sorts of things, you know, we're moving further and further away from pure play security. And we really are getting into the whole issue of risk. We're getting into how we run our businesses in a cyber enabled environment. And yet there are very few organizations that, that really, I think, have grasped that. Uh, and those that have clearly are in at an advantage. It's a lot to think about. That's and, a huge amount. Yeah. <laughs> but it's given me a lot to think about. And I wonder if we can, um, can I have you back? Can we have the a second part of this conversation to go over some more of these really pressing issues? Oh, I'd love to. Yeah, That'd be great. Thanks again for your time, Steve. Thanks for coming to have this conversation. And for listeners, for more information about how to align cybersecurity with your business and communicate better with your board of directors and other stakeholders, visit the Information Security Forum online at www.securityforum.org. Thanks again, Steve. I look forward to speaking with you next time. <laughs>